no attendees yet. We'll obviously wait. <laughs> Um, this is Brian Kowalczyk and um, hello to any attendees that have joined. Uh, we're going to wait just another minute or so while the uh, participants are coming into the meeting. So if you could just be patient and uh, wait another minute, we'll uh, get started. Thanks. Um, yeah, anybody that's joined the session, we, we're just going to wait uh, another minute to let everybody file into the webinar. So just be patient. We'll get started here in just a minute. Thanks. Okay, we've got a good number of the people that joined. Um, I think we'll get the session started. So I just want to say hello to everyone. Welcome. You know, thanks for joining and your interest in JMAG. Um, <clears throat> my name is Brian Kowalczyk from PowerSys. And uh, <clears throat> welcome to the session about JMAG optimization. Um, next, we'll hear from my colleague, Diraj Baba who's one of our JMAG technical experts at PowerSys. Uh, <clears throat> D-Rod is currently a senior electromagnetic design engineer at PowerSys Solutions. He's held positions as applications and project engineer focusing on low frequency electromagnetics in the past. He obtained his PhD, master's and bachelor's degrees all in electrical engineering. Um, his current research interests include high power density electric machine design control and optimization techniques, focusing on traction and aerospace applications. So let's now welcome Diraj to share his presentation. So take it away, Diraj. Thank you, Brian. Um, let me share my screen here quickly. Yeah, I hope you can see my screen. That's fine. And um, yes, we can see. Looks all good. right. So thank you. Um, uh, hello, uh, welcome to this uh, session on optimization. So this is basically a, a, a session that is created a bit uh, collaboration with JSOL, um, which is the developer for JMAC, and uh, the title being Motor Design Using Topology Optimization and Parametric Optimization. So this is the uh, uh, overview of the session or the back for this presentation. First, I'll start with the background or the kind of motivation and then show the problem statement, uh, propose few solutions and value, uh, go on to the value of the proposed method. And then in detail and in depth uh, view of what the analysis process is and the method is. Uh, and lastly, we'll have some references that I've cited in this presentation. Um, starting with the background, um, typically for more focused on the EV traction machines, um, it is important to achieve high power density, um, but Achieving that with the conventional experience-based designs or even improvements on the existing products may not be readily possible, or it may not really meet that exact specifications that are required. So in this sense, optimization is almost always required to meet those uh, uh, standards and requirements. And uh, a design space exploration in that optimization process must be efficiently performed so as to conserve the computation uh, resources as well as time. So then the problem is uh, parametric optimization is something that's usually used in this scenario, but it may not always find uh, designs that meet all the requirements. Uh, the reason being a, a global exploration is required 
and uh, using genetic algorithm has been proven efficient, but it's highly dependent on the variables and the ranges that are used in the parameter definition of that optimization problem. And then the second question would be, how do we perform a global exploration? How do we know it is uh, global or uh, it, is it covering the entire design space? Um, also, the second problem is the computation time, of course. Um, there are usually massive number of designs required to perform a global exploration. And uh, it should also, the computation time should meet the design cycle timeline uh, in, in, the, in the company. Uh, in particular, if you're looking at topology optimization, uh, that requires a lot more uh, cases or designs to verify or make sure it, it explores the entire uh, global space. So uh, let me start with talking about these optimization methods and what is the difference between these two, uh, the two types of methods we're looking at. Uh, so here on the uh, left, we have the original geometry, uh, by, which is defined by uh, just some parameters. And then there's parametric optimization, where we'll usually define those parameters as a range, a range of values. And the shape of the geometry itself remains relatively constant, but the, uh, the geometry uh, parameters are kind of modifying the position of the magnets or the holes or, or the steel or the barriers and so forth. And then we have topology optimization um, where we define uh, the, the space that is occupied by the rotor as, as domains. And the optimization is automatically trying to figure out which material should be where to give the best performance possible. And then uh, let's look at the type of uh, computation time required for these kind of optimization. First is a parametric optimization on this table. Um, for example, the case we took here is uh, we are having, we have 10 design variables that are pertaining to geometry, current and current phase. And the population size is 50 and the number of generations uh, is also 50. Uh, it's using a global uh, search with a genetic algorithm. So the total number of cases or the designs in this particular example were 2,500. And it's possible to perform a distributed calculation, meaning the, the jobs can be distributed on a, a local network. And then there's this topology optimization. Uh, as I said, the domains are defined, not, not parameters. And the domains in this case, what we call as Gaussian functions, there are 50 of those. And the population size is much higher compared to parameter optimization, it's at 200 and the number of generations is also 200. This is also using a genetic algorithm for the global search. And the number of designs or cases in this case is uh, 40,000. And of course, this is also feasible to send out to the HPC or local network and distribute the execution. So uh, once we talk about topology optimization, we have to address some of the challenges with it. Um, of course, it is, uh, it's a shape uh, optimization. Uh, so the, the, based on the constraints defined, the, the geometry obtained from this optimization may not always be manufacturable, but it gives us a good idea of the layout of where which material should be. Um, for example, this design here, so that's an, a result that is obtained from uh, topology optimization. And we can see that there are small uh, protrusions there that aren't exactly uh, really manufacturable. So, we have to go in and trim the geometry a little bit after uh, the optimum design is found, and uh, we have to make sure it is manufactured. And during the process, uh, we also have to make sure that changing these shapes from this to this is not, not impacting the objectives of the optimization. For example, if you're reducing torque ripple, and this is what the design shows up, by changing this, we have to check the sensitivity of that to make sure it's not um, increasing the torque ripple. So uh, here, what we are trying to do is combine these two optimizations. Um, and both parametric and topology optimization have some advantages and disadvantages. So we'll, we can combine those and try to extract a better output uh, throughout by using the entire optimization process. So this is what we're calling a, a two-step optimization process. And that's uh, solution number one to deal with uh, the optimization global search itself. Um, so using the topology optimization to perform the global search 
it does not also it does not rely on the designer's know-how of uh, designing the machine or precisely con control defining the parameters it will ultimately select the best layout while meeting the objective functions and then we what we can do is extract the geometry or the optimum uh, design from that check the sensitivities of uh, the shapes to objective functions and then set parameter ranges which for those small geometries such that we can do a parametric optimization and then get a better design in the end overall and then the solution to is the introduction of a high processing uh, computing environment uh, hpc and this is where we can distribute the process uh, instead of running in sequence of one after other we can distribute all the jobs at a different nodes and we can run them simultaneously to decrease, decrease the analysis time uh, so for JMAG, we have this uh, PSL or power simulation license. Uh, a single power simulation license will allow to run 100 uh, jobs simultaneously. So the value of this proposed method is that uh, using, using uh, the parametric optimization alone, it is difficult to reach uh, a, a really high performance machine. And also it requires a lot of uh, design know-how from the designer. So by performing the topology optimization or parametric optimization from the topology optimization outcome, it is, it is possible to obtain a manufacturable design by manually tuning some of those uh, uh, shapes in the geometry. And also by combining the HPC and the power simulation license, uh, this entire solution can be obtained in less than a day. Uh, for example, in this case, we are looking at about 40,000 uh, designs and on the topology optimization, approximately 10,000 designs on the parametric optimization. Uh, this just gives an idea of how the Pareto front by uh, changes by using just the parametric optimization and the red one being the two-step optimization. So this is the baseline model um, that is used uh, for this study. Uh, it's a eight pole 48 slot machine uh, with maximum torque of 290 Newton meters and the mag magnet is a neodymium uh, sintered magnet. And the objectives then are to optimize this such that the maximum torque is more than 350 Newton meters and the torque ripple should be less than 10%. And of course we are doing a 2D uh, optimization. So it's a 2D model with a one eighth slice and we are using a periodic boundary there. And the overview of the analysis then is to perform the topology optimization and then perform the parametric optimization based on the, the optimum geometry obtained from uh, topology optimization. And uh, one other thing we'll do here is uh, to define the range uh, after getting the results from the parametric opt uh, topology optimization, uh, we'll define the parameters and automatically find the range of those parameters uh, using a range finder function. Um, so the, the scenario for comparison, we did both uh, steps. The first one is that there's only a parametric op, uh, optimization, and this is for reference. And then we do the two-step optimization as described. Uh, the Gaussian functions for the rotor shape are 42, and the number of generations is 150, and the population size is not 900. And then proceeding on to the parametric optimization from the result here, uh, the dimension variables are 29 variables that are, uh, describe the rotor, and the number of generations is 100, and the population size is 100. All right, I think I lost there for a quick second. There, okay. Um, and then this is the results that are obtained from uh, both the optimization uh, methods. Um, so the original geometry is uh, highlighted here in yellow, and everything in black is the reference optimization, meaning only parametric optimization is performed. And the orange here is the two-step optimization. So we can see that the Pareto front has been in improved further, and all the designs in this orange box here meet the criteria of torque greater than 350 Newton meters, and the torque ripple is less than 10%. So by adding this topology optimization uh, and two-step optimization process, the mean torque can be increased while keeping the torque ripple low. And we'll find a lot more designs in that 
uh, by exploring the global space more efficiently. Um, for here, we're looking at two examples that are on the Pareto front uh, for both the designs, uh, both optimization steps, meaning from one from the black and one from the orange Pareto curve. And we can see that uh, the geometry is quite different. Uh, specifically, the distribution of this V-shaped magnet, uh, it's much wider here, and the flux barriers uh, for the Q-axis is not well defined. Here, we have a really uh, good bridge shape that focuses the flux all the way in the D-axis to, to the state. And looking at specific results for those two machines, we can see that the saliency of the machine is increased by the two-step optimization from 1.77 to 1.88. Or, and looking at the torque, uh, the parameter of both machines have, uh, the, the magnet torque is identical. So oh, that's a uh, wrong color here. The blue one is the magnet torque and the one on the top is the reluctance torque. And we can see that compared to parametric op only optimization, the two-step optimization produced 7.5% uh, more reluctance torque. And here's the torque waveforms uh, looking at, uh, oh, so once the final geometry is obtained, this is looking at the sensitivity of the shape of those uh, barriers on the top magnet. Uh, these are slightly modified and we can see that the torque ripple reduces further. So design A is the red torque waveform and design B is the black one. So these are some things we have to manually check to make sure uh, how the sensitivity is to changing those shapes. Sometimes we might get even better results. And also doing some structural analysis at maximum uh, RPM of 10,000. Uh, and the results uh, for uh, here is about 100 megapascal is the maximum. And while the yield uh, strength for this material is somewhere around uh, 300 megapascal. And jumping onto the optimization time, the total time for this process was 12.5 hours. And that includes the topology optimization initially for 6.5 hours and extracting the geometry, uh, checking the sensitivity and setting up the necessary process for parametric optimization is about five hours. And then performing the parametric optimization is one hour. And this is, we are talking about the two-step optimization. And just to repeat, the topology optimization has approximately 40,000 cases and the parametric optimization was approximately 10,000 cases or designs. Um, so give you a rundown of the process again, uh, the original geometry shape is shown here. And from topology optimization, we, we extracted this as the optimum design, but we can see the shapes are not well-defined and there's also no bridge at the top. So quite this is not manufacturable in the sense that there's nothing holding this piece of uh, metal there. So extracting from that, uh, it was hand-shaped to create this same uh, shape of the air pocket and add bridges to make it more uh, realizable or manufacturable. And then we also perform the mechanical analysis of that. And then preparing for parametric optimization, uh, each of those shapes were defined with the 26 defined, uh, 26 parameters. And uh, here we are omitting the mesh dependent steadiness in defining the ranges of these. And uh, the geometry constraints are set manually, of course. And the next step was checking the sensitivity uh, by manually changing some of the portions. And these are the results for uh, that sensitivity analysis to identify uh, how the net torque and the torque ripple is impacted by those changes. Uh, it can be seen here that cases, uh, sensitivities one and two uh, greatly affect the mean torque and the torque ripple, um, but it also causes the uh, magnet flux to be short-circuited when the entire portion is made out of iron. And then uh, we performed the range finder analysis. So this is a function that's added, uh, newest, one of the newer functions that added to uh, JMAG. Basically, you can let the range finder automatically run through uh, an initial uh, set of runs to figure out the, the ranges for each of the parameters. Um, if we are doing random search, uh, that's the amount of time it takes to determine what kind of geometries are feasible and, uh, and get the optimization results. 
and the range finder function is quite efficient in determining uh, really quickly uh, what what are the limits of the ranges of each of those constraints or parameters that are set on the geometry. Um, and as I said, this has been recently added to version 20, and there's already been significant improvement with the version 20.1. So the black curve here is uh, the, the time it took for uh, geometry shape for, for genetic algorithm initial generation uh, using the range finder. And uh, version 20.1, it's quite improved. And the x-axis here is the, is the number of geometries, uh, geometry variables that are defined. Um, and this is the uh, model information for the topology optimization. Uh, speed is 1000 RPM, the rate of current being 250 amps, and the phase of the current or the current angle being 37.4 degrees. Um, we're using 17 steps, that means uh, 17 divisions for one cycle. And the number of mesh elements is uh, between 12 to 13,000 uh, elements. Um, the speed up ratio uh, for single core to distributed uh, analysis, basically this plot shows that if you run the topology optimization or the parametric optimization on a single core, uh, the amount of uh, time, let's say, is one. And then as we include, increase the number of cores, that's the speed up ratio that we get. So we can see that it, it kind of saturates somewhere around uh, 40 to 50. And then this, this uh, minimal incre increment as we increase the number of cases. Um, by the way, to, to give an idea, it takes approximately uh, 10 seconds for the parametric optimization, uh, each single uh, each analysis or a single uh, job, and 20 seconds for the topology optimization in this case. And this is the operating environment we were using. Uh, the number of cores uh, we have in hand was 200. Uh, it was on a Red Hat Linux um, server operating system. Uh, it was an Intel Xeon Goal uh, CPU running at two gigahertz and about 192 GB of RAM. And the license we've used to PSL, which is the power simulation license. Um, estimated uh, total uh, job duration. Uh, of course, as I said, it was two PSL license, meaning 200 uh, jobs in parallel. But this plot is just showing that it's not always necessary. Uh, with the two PSL, we, yes, we got it in close to about half a day. Uh, even with single PSL, it should be less than a day, or even that not available. Uh, just with using 24 cores, it's still achievable in under three days, um, running in total of about 50,000 jobs. So that will be the end of this session. Um, and that's the related material that I've cited here. Um, Feel free to go and look over these. There, some of these are available on the JMAG website. And um, there's the contact information and the website link uh, if you'd like to take a look. And we'd be great, happy to answer any questions that you have. So, <laughs> Diraj, thanks. Mm -hmm. for the presentation uh, using JMAG to optimize motor design. So, um, you know, great job. It was re really informational. Thanks. Thank you. So we're, we're now going to start the uh, Q&A session and to let the team know or the participants know we're, we're ahead of schedule. So there's plenty of time for Q&A. So if you have any questions for DRAJ, if you could please post them on your Q&A panel, would be appreciated. So we've got a fair amount of time to answer those questions. So I'm seeing questions coming in. Mm -hmm. So here we go. So there are quite a few topology optimization techniques such as SIMP, BESO, NGNet, et cetera. Which of these mm. slash any other is available in JMAG? Um, we use Gaussian functions. I think that's, um, if I'm not mistaken, that's that's the ng-net. Um, it should be similar to that, I think. Uh, I'll have to double check on that, but um, sorry, I, I can definitely, if you contact me, uh, I can definitely send you the links to the paper that uh, that 
perfectly describes the function we are using. So there's a few few questions in this one. Sure. Also, is it possible for the user to implement any topology optimization algorithm in, say, Python or MATLAB? Uh, I, I'm not sure about Python, but MATLAB, uh, JMAC does um, link with the Mac, MATLAB optimization toolbox. And we also have uh, JMAC ex extensively supports scripting functions, so I suppose it's very possible. Uh, Okay, thanks for the, for the answer. Mm -hmm. um, so some more questions. Is it possible to include power factor in optimization criteria? Yes, yes it can. Uh, there is a way to add an expression um, that calculates the power factor at the end of uh, initial case and set that as one of the objectives as well. Okay, great, thanks. Keep going here. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when comparing the parameter optimization and topology optimization, is the pole arc of V-shaped magnets changeable in parameter optimization? Um, uh, oh, sorry, go it, ahead. No, and then, it says from the compared two cross sections, it seems the pole arc of V-shaped magnets, a parameter optimization does not make sense. So yeah, the, the first part of the answer is yes, the pole arc is, is a variable. Uh, the magnets can move sideways and magnet length is also a variable. So that's, that's the optimum design that came out of the parameter optimization. And uh, in, in saying that, we also have to keep in mind that when we're defining the variable ranges, uh, even through the range finder, there's always possibility that some combination of variables will not produce a feasible geometry at all. Um, so we, we do not want to extensively constrain the range. Uh, if it's too small, probably we're not searching in the global space, but if it's too large, there's too many designs that are, that are uh, there's no feasible geometry for that. So it, it's kind of playing, uh, it's a trade-off there, and with the defined variable range and the possible uh, exploration space, that was the one of the design on the Pareto front. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, still waiting for some questions to come in. Mm -hmm. So we'll just kind of hold for a minute here. And I've asked the attendees to go ahead and post your questions on the Q&A panel for DRAJ, thanks. So I've got another, another one. Okay. Thank you, Raj. Can we do a multi-objective and multi-variable optimization through JMAG, <clears throat> like variable more than 10? Yeah, yeah, precisely. So that, that's, uh, that's one of, that is exactly what this example is about. Um, so here we're using torque ripple and average torque or integral average torque as objective. So of course it's, it is two, but it still satisfies the multi-objective and you can keep adding. So you can use both torque, torque and torque ripple and then power factor um, as in variable or maybe efficiency. So there are, uh, it, it can increase, but you have to keep in mind that once you increase the number of objectives, you're not looking at a single Pareto front. It's a Pareto surface now when you add three and you add, add, keep on adding dimensions to it. Uh, the computation resources to achieve that optimal solution increases exponentially. Um, so it is possible. And uh, sorry, what was the second question? Did, uh, more than 10? Oh, it said, it said like, like variables more than 10. Okay, yeah, it is possible too. So this example uses 26 variables, uh, if I remember correctly. So it is, uh, it is quite possible. But of mm -hmm. course, again, as you keep increasing the number of variables, uh, it is a dimension on, on the possible matrix of solutions. 
So the computation time goes up. Okay, great. Thanks for the answer. Mm -hmm. So I'm <clears throat> getting some more questions here. Sure. Um, so the examples in your presentation are 2D models. Mm -hmm. Um, can JMAG topology optimization be done for 3D models? Um, I suppose it can. Uh, I don't see a reason why it cannot, um, but I have to double check. I haven't performed that. Of course, 3D optimization requires massively huge amount of computation power. So that's not something I've checked myself. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll have to look into that one. Mm -hmm. Yes, please, please send me that question um, by email and I'll definitely try and answer that for you. Okay. So actually I'm <clears throat> getting an, a, an actual answer from our other colleague and oh. the answer is yes on 3D model. Okay, that's great. Um, <laughs> but but it, as you said, it takes a lot of, lot of resource, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's feasible, but quite a bit more resource. Yes. Um, another question is, um, do you know if you can run multi-physics, um, EM structural thermal optimization for topology optimization? That's a very good question. Uh, I think it is possible to set it up by scripting. Mm -hmm. uh, Currently the optimization, the default process that's available in JMAG like with minimal user input is focused on uh, single physics. It's, it's electromagnetic or structural. Okay. Um, but we do know that we have done similar studies with one of our technical, or a few of our technical partners on the optimization front, um, combining electromagnetic and, and structural uh, in a single optimization. So that's, that is possible with GMA, but it would require a little more customization or user script to run that. Okay, and our colleague also is chiming in um, that there's an example, JAC257. Okay. can give, give a multi-physics uh, for topology optimization. Oh, excellent. So that, that's a good reference for, for mm -hmm. who asked that question. So another couple more questions coming in from uh, our Hoover here is, um, so the first one is, what are the rules for geometry extraction from topology optimization and why does it take so long? Um, the, the rules are in a sense, so we are looking at an, the optimum geometry on the Pareto front. Um, and then we have to determine which of those are more manufacturable uh, which of those are, or which of those shapes are more sensitive to uh, the objective functions? Like if we change something, how drastically is that going to impact? So we have to filter through the designs to make sure as a user, we understand which parameters we can, we can change. And then the next part comes in is we have to define those parameters um, and the ranges for those efficiently so that um, if we are changing the position of a line, it doesn't collide with the outer uh, diameter, for, for example, or changing one line moves something else. So we have to go through scenarios to make sure the geometry is robust for setting up that parametric optimization at the second step. So that's where it takes a little time for the user um, to go through those steps and make sure everything is, uh, is, is sensible for the parametric optimization. Okay, thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. So another question here. So is it possible to get the adjoint ADJOINT of mm -hmm. the FEA stiffness matrix and implement sensitivity analysis using a joint method for implementing gradient-based topology optimization rather than population-based? That is a very deep question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can repeat parts of it too. No, I think I, think I got the, the main part of it. So it, it is possible to extract that information. Um, can we use that back in the optimization? Um, that might be more of a scripting 
uh, I mean, user scripting required for it. Um, I, I, I don't know if that's something that's readily available mm -hmm. at the moment to like just extract the information and put it back to run the gradient-based optimization there. Okay, thanks. But yeah, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> So I think, I think we have most of our questions answered. There's any, we've got like a, another minute left here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think, you know, Dheeraj, I think we're good. I think we're going to end the session. Okay. Um, so let me just give a little bookkeeping to the attendees. Um, so when, this, when you leave the session, you can switch to the next session in Whova, and the topic's going to be JMAG and research and development. And also, when you leave the session to start the next one, please refresh your page. So that'll help avoid um, any technical difficulties. So uh, appreciate your attendance. Thanks for joining. Thanks for your interest. And uh, Dheeraj, also, thanks to yourself for the presentation Thank you. and the Q&A. So we'll uh, end the session now. We'll let everyone go to the next session. Uh, thanks again, and we'll, we'll talk later. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye.